of some MPFL mass there. Well, welcome you on the show. 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adini Aji Shafe. We have to look at stories trending in the world of sport this hour. I'm joined by Ibrahim Yusuf. Good to have you. Nice to be here, Adini, as always. Good one. Let's start with uh, FIFA Under 20 World Cup. Where else is it taking place over there in Costa Rica? Falconet can break the jeans according to the midfielder there. That's Deborah Abiodun. Well, she has been talking tough for the entire squad. Team Nigeria, that's the Falconet. They said they can break the jeans. They want to make sure they win this one. They have all actually gotten to the final twice and mm. twice they've lost. But this time around, one of them, Deborah Abiodun, is saying, well, we can do it. We can win it this time around. And we just hope that it happens. Well, from the way it is, uh, <laughs> the ladies are ready. They are ready in Costa Rica. They'll be playing tonight. By 12 p.m., uh, they will be playing that game, it, it, at least when everybody is sleeping. Mm, well, I, I, let's, we, we're, we're trying to hope. We're trying to be hopeful and see that um, third time is the charm, mm. that they can get to the final for the third time and hopefully win it. Um, but still, even if they don't get to the final and even if they don't win it, we, we, we want to, there's something that we want to see as, 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 foot, as football fans. As a football fan, you appreciate effort. When you see effort being made, when you see players playing with conviction, really putting themselves out there, throwing everything at their opponent, including the kitchen sink, you know that they actually gave their best. So even if they do go down, you knew they went down swinging. So you really will not fault them for that. But if you go there, you're lethargic, you're like a desical about the whole situation, and at the end of the day, you still get beat. I mean, like, it's, it's too much for us to bear. Go out there, give a very good account of yourselves, defend the colors as best as you can, and definitely we will appreciate you. You understand? So, but we do hope that they can be able to go there, do the business, and bring back the trophy. Because um, I think right now, um, it, the, what, the, the, what the men are not able to do and the women are not able to do, I think the girls should be able to do for mm, us. At least. <laughs> exactly. But on, on if, if, I, if you look at our performance at this competition, we've been mm. doing well when it comes to the underage uh, football competition, mm. especially uh, our ladies at the World Cup. Like mm. I said earlier, twice we've gone to the finals, uh, although Germany has always been the uh, problem against, uh, against Nigeria. But mm. right now, they also tested the bitter field for the first game against uh, Colombia. Mm. Uh, from the way it is, while they were still in Nigeria, I was, I was opportune to meet the coach, Coach uh, Christopher Danjima, and he said, well, they will take each game mm. as it comes. But well, that's how you should uh -huh. approach a tournament. Any tournament, that's how you should mm. actually approach any tournament with that kind of mentality. You approach, you, you take it as a game-by-game -game basis. You don't look at the tournament as a whole. Exactly. If you look at the tournament as a whole, do you know how far you're going to get? But you, you look at each game, take it for its own merit. Okay, this is our first game. We play this one, we win it. Then we start thinking about the next one. Then you start thinking about your next one. But if you look at the tournament as a whole, you say, okay, fine, I'm going to go there and do this and do that during the tournament. Do you know how far you're going to go? At the end of the day, you get dumped in the first round and then you come back home, all your plans are for naught. But take each game as it comes. So that's, I think that is the right mentality. The coach has the right mentality. He needs to instill that mentality in his players because they need to keep their eye on the ball. Mm. And the ball is the next game, no matter what it is. If you play this game and it finishes, whether you win or lose, your next focus should be on the next game and not looking at the tournament as a whole, that this is what I'm going to do throughout this tournament because you don't know how far you're going to go. Why we are still talking about the tournament taking place in Costa Rica? Well, Falcons are going to be final against uh, a very formidable one, France. And right now, according to the coach of France, they are aware of Nigeria's depth. They know they are very, very deep when it comes to playing football. And now the coach is not taking it for granted, as she was talking tough to the journalists that they will do everything possible to make sure they get out against Nigeria. But well, who knows? Maybe Nigeria is actually the one that will turn things around against. Them. Yes, we do hope. But you know, we all know the United Nations of France, what they can be able to do on a football pitch. The United Nations of France are a very formidable team. Mm. They when it different, comes, uh, look, at, look at their squad. That, they have that, how many blacks there? That, One, two, that, three, four, that is, five, that, six, seven. That, that is why it's the United <laughs> Nations of France. All oh, their national that. teams, all their national teams are like that. They are a conglomeration of, of a lot of, of people from different especially parts Africa. of the, from different parts of the world. So they do that. But especially Africa. Yes, of course. Especially Africa. You have people coming in from the Cook Islands, from Suriname, uh, playing for uh, play, play, playing for France. So they truly are the United Nations. So we know how strong they actually are when it comes to female football, and we know that they are a team to be reckoned with. But all this is just talk. Mm. We can talk from here until next year. We'll beat this one, we'll beat that one, we'll do this, we'll do that. It doesn't really matter. What matters is what happens at the end of 90 minutes. 
all right that is what happens so if the girls can actually go there with that mentality that okay fine these are the united nations but we're going to beat them and they can actually beat them because if our girls play up to their potential because we know they have potential if they play up to their potential there's nobody we can't beat even the germany there's our bogey team we can beat them we can beat anybody Colombia just showed us that Germany was beatable. So why can't we? Why, why can't we beat France? If Colombia can beat Germany, why can't Nigeria beat France? It's, so very it's just like at least uh, they, they've opened European uh, gates for us. They exactly. Say, okay, the Germans that you so much dread, mm. we just defeated. Exactly. When so the French, the French team too. You two go there. And exactly, do your and and can be beaten. And who says Ghana can actually show us that the US can be beaten as well? Because we 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 hear these names and then. We 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 begin to chicken we, out kind of in the first place. We <laughs> we shoot ourselves in the leg between thinking, ah, oh, we can't beat these guys. We can only go there and hope we don't get beat seven nil. You understand? If you can keep it a three nil, then we're fine. It's responsible. It's respectable. That's not the kind of mentality that we should go in with. Mm. Colombia went in with the mentality to beat Germany, and they beat them. So why can't we go in there with the same mentality to say we we are going to beat France and we are going to beat them at the end of the day? Good one out there. It is very possible. Nigeria will be playing against them uh, by 12 uh, p.m., or rather a.m. I gave it a on that that match will be coming up between Nigeria and France. And that game is a game that a lot of people want to wake up to watch. France, we know how good they are, but Falcons also, they are very, very good. In fact, France are also scared of Nigeria because you just have to let, they just have to let you know, according to their coach, talking tough that, yes, we know how good the Nigerian side are and we are going to hold it against them. We wait to see what's going to happen because I need that mind by 12 a.m. tonight. That game will be up between Nigeria and France on the 20 World Cup taking place in Costa Rica. Well, from there, let's go straight down to Africa. We move away from Costa Rica. Let's talk about CAF Champions League, CAF Confederation, where Rivers United, Plateau United, and others, right now, they get deadline to present venues. The venue, each uh, team must present their home uh, venue right now. But uh, CAF actually sounded out August 20 is the D day if we don't submit. Now you know, let me borrow that <laughs> particular <laughs> word from Pigeon. Mm, well, definitely, um, it, CAF wants to make the Champions League or wants to see a certain standard when it comes mm. to the Champions League. It is expected that if you win your league or if you come in those Champions League places that you have a certain uh, degree of respectability that you will not be able to take us to any, any, any sort of pitch that is going to cause a lot of trouble for a lot of players. So I think that is why, that's the reason for all this. All right, submit the name of your home team, uh, of, your, of your home stadium. We'll look at it. Definitely they will look at it. Mm. You understand? So they make sure that it's up to scratch, you know? So I think it's a good thing. And um, for these uh, Nigerian representatives that we have, then it's an opportunity for them to actually try to spruce up those home bases because some of the field, some of the pitches we actually see in the MPFL are really uh, maybe because uh, I still remember when Cav was in Nigeria, they approved about seven stadium. Mm. Uh, that's uh, Samuel Ogumedia in Benin. Mm. They approved Abuja Stadium, Uyo Stadium. Uh, that's Mobolaji Johnson in Lagos, and you think of Asaba mm. and like that. But right now we have four four clubs: Quara United. The yeah, stadium was not actually approved. If I, I don't think it's approved. And you have uh, Rivers United, mm -hmm. although uh, the, the one in, in Port Harcourt was approved. And you look at uh, Plateau United mm -hmm. in Jaws. Yes. Was he approved? No. You look at Remo Stars. Although mm -hmm. they have a very beautiful pitch in mm -hmm. Ikene. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's approved already. Mm -hmm. But if they were allowed that to happen, it means uh, only Rivers. Mm -hmm have the opportunity of using their, their own, own home, home, home ground. Stadium, exactly, home ground. exactly. And, 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 that is something that, and that is something that the quality of our league, it speaks to the quality of our league. It speaks to the quality of the clubs that we actually have. Even though most of these clubs are owned by the government, the government does not deem it fit or does not see that it's a worthwhile investment for them to build stadiums for these teams. You understand? Mm. So it's very difficult for these teams to compete when it comes to continental t tournaments. Now imagine the Plateau United that we're talking about and the Cry United that we're talking about. If their home teams, if their home stadiums are not approved for this, then they, that means they'll have to go elsewhere, which means their fans will have to travel. 
before they can be able to go there to support them. At the end of the day, it's not their fans that go to watch the matches. It's the people that are actually there. Around the, the, around the, the stadium. Around, say, okay, so fine, let's go and see this. This is an opportunity for us to go and do that. How many people will be able to go? How many people, how many tickets can they be able to sell? Then what is the advantage of being in the Champions League? Because that is the advantage. The advantage of being in the Champions League is you get to play these big games, big continental nights. You get to fill the stadiums, sell tickets, and make a lot of business and make a lot of money. Sometimes it's not about the prize money that you get at the end of the day. It's about all these games. All the money that you accrue from exactly, all the from games what you, you play. From the games you play, you understand. The business that comes to your stadium, the tickets that you sell, mm. every other thing, that's, that's how you actually get money and make it Even count. the jerseys. And, uh, and, and, and you make it count. <laughs> a lot of people, but you see, the anymore. thing is, it's not a question of whether people buy. It's a question of whether they are available. They actually have some. Some, some exactly. Some how many? Mm. You understand? How many? A lot of them don't even have the ones that they can wear to play matches. So you it's understand? For only for the mm. players. Exactly. They, it's they only for the players. For. Immediately after a game, you, you, you go, you, you go, and, 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 and exactly, and then you go to the laundry and wash it. <laughs> <laughs> and wash it for the next game. You understand? So, so, so even that, we talk about merchandising, you know? I can only count a handful of Nigerian clubs that have actually seen their jerseys. A handful of them. So that is also some an aspect of the business that is not being tapped. Me, if you make them available and people don't buy, it's a different thing. But people do look for these things and they do buy them. Hmm. Go to Kano and see how many people wear Kano Pillars jerseys. You will be surprised. A lot of people actually buy it and wear it because they support the team. And that is one of the main reasons why they can be able to show their support to the team. So make it available, merchandise these things. These are, this is how you make money from football. It's not just by sitting down and saying, okay, fine, we need to win this tournament. If we win this tournament, they'll give us 100,000. Okay, let's go and win the tournament. And then you get the 100,000, and that's that. It doesn't work like that. You have to commercialize. You have to expand your horizons. And that is how you can be able to run a football club. Unfortunately, we don't have business people running football clubs. We have government who can afford to run at a loss. So basically, our footballers are not professional footballers. They're civil servants because they work for the government. Mm. Well, he actually said so that they are civil servants. <laughs> 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 well, we've been looking at the CAF Champions League, CAF Confederation Cup, where Rivers, Plato, Quara, Remo Stars, the ball just have to submit the name of their venue, the home base, uh, the home team just have to submit where they will be playing their games. Across Africa, that's the demand coming from CAF, the body that runs African football. From the way it is, the four of them will be playing for Nigeria, representing us there, and we just hope that they'll be able to do well according to uh, the just released uh, uh, fixtures that were released by CAF there. We're well, wishing all Nigerian teams the best as they prosecute their games in the CAF Champions League and also in CAF Confederation Cup. Now, quickly, let's talk about the ones that actually happen right now about Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest won £20 million rated Emmanuel Dennis on loan. Why on loan? I ask that question. Why not full buy? What kind of well, you think, <laughs> forest? Forest has spent a lot of money in uh, Then they should now come for they, they, when, they, when they, they are have, buying. They have, they have spent. They have they spent check, a lot check, of money. Check so most the of the players they actually acquired. It's business. And you have to look at. You mm. have to at the end of the day. You have to look at the balance. I'm sheet. just trying to make case for you. <laughs> <laughs> you have to look at the balance sheet at the end of the day. And besides, going to a team on loan doesn't diminish your. Uh, capacity or it doesn't diminish your your worth it's, it's not a, it's not a but, bad but thing. at times uh, at times mm -hmm. you look you look at player when they go on loan mm -hmm. two things could actually happen one if they peak in that uh, loan lo is it loaning or loan <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Mm -hmm. okay the club that loaned them mm -hmm. from their parent club mm -hmm. if they perform very well there there's every 10 days that they want to stay mm -hmm. they would love to stay exactly. and if the parent club decide to call them back mm -hmm. it's always very painful because they click while playing for the club mm -hmm. that actually loaned so that's them. why so it's always very painful so it all depends on the contract that you sign most of it, you'll actually have a loan with an option or obligation uh, to, to buy. buy. Yeah, of course. You understand? When, and some even became, uh, some options become obligations when certain conditions are met. They'll say, okay, fine, if he makes first five, 15 first team appearances, if you score five goals in the whole season, or if you score ten goals in the whole season, or if you don't get relegated, then it becomes an obligation that you must buy for this set amount of money. So I think a loan deal is it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity. Well, I'm suspecting the fact that, you know, what thought? got relegated. Mm -hmm. You know, at times, most of these clubs, too, they are very wise. They mm -hmm. know what they are doing by, like, okay, you know, the, this club actually relegated. We need to help this player out mm -hmm. from relegation, playing the relegation or championship. What do we do? Okay, we'll take you on loan. Yeah, you see, the thing is, a smart club, 
Mm. Goes to teams like Watford that get not relegated. Look at your their best players. And pick them. Because number one, look at Ismail Lassa. He's also the going. player will want to go mm. because he doesn't want to play in in, in the first division. Yeah. You understand? He will want to go. Number two, Watford will be looking at their balance sheet. Okay, we're not going to get as much money as we got last season because we're not playing with the big boys anymore. So why not cash in on this guy? while we still have the chance. Or, bet, or a worst case scenario, let's get his wage off our bill. At least his wage bill off our, off our books, at least for this season. You understand? Mm -hmm. And you will be getting a player that you want, a quality player that can actually come. So it's a win-win-win situation for everybody mm -hmm. all round when you look at it. So I don't think Emmanuel Dell is going to Forest. Our very own forest. Mm. Yeah, go into you forest. See, no. Even go when you, you even as you are mentioning the forest, you are feeling forest. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, yeah. seriously, I expect them to make at least an option. Well, maybe it's included in the terms and condition of that mm -hmm. particular contract. It, it could be uh, option to buy fully mm. after the loan loan deal. But it really, and who knows? Emmanuel what? Dennis, and I still don't understand why. All the clubs, Everton, Newcastle, all the and noise. Even your Manchester United. Like I said yesterday, mm -hmm. this player deserves to play for most of these top clubs. Exactly, I don't know why Nottingham and, Forest coming for him on loan. When why are you calling Nottingham no, Forest? No, because I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I'm you not should happy. have said Manchester United, but you're saying no. Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest. No, no, no. They're no, just no, coming no. from. No, 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 no. Not here. But Nottingham Forest have. Serious... Don't get me wrong. I'm they not have, talking about. That's they have hey, European wait, wait, wait. pedigree. Let's not look in. These are former European champions you're talking about. Oh my goodness. You're talking about that. But still, when was that? They were former. They are better than Arsenal. They are better than Arsenal. Can they win European football now? But they are better than Arsenal right now. They have got a Champions. They have got Champions League medals. They record. Yes. Uh -huh, good. That's records make the team. Record. Wait, records make the team. Record. If we're talking but about when, pedigree, when you talk about performance right now, but when you Arsenal will trash. But when you talk about when pedigree, when you, when you talk about pedigree, what do you look at? Uh, pedigree. You look at what we've oh, won before. Oh my goodness. And Forest yeah. has uh, won wait, it. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Nottingham Forest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Really, I'm yeah. not happy for the fact that Nottingham Forest, a club coming just coming to the EPL, yeah. are going to get him on loan. While clubs like Everton, Newcastle, so they all sport, they are there. Arsenal. Chelsea, man, you they couldn't just see this guy and sign him fully. Yeah, I, I yes. And Manu someone Dennis is gunning for his smile as Are you he, telling me that Sar is so good that Dennis is not even close he's to a, him? But look at somebody has come for Sar. What I'm it's saying just like is that it's just like the full it's, not, it's not a team that you want. It's not <laughs> yeah, a team that you want. Full with the, for with sir. Is, they're not coming. And someone is going with a loan is, deal is, for. It's not, it's not a team that you want for the kind of deal that you want. You, but I know you. The club is coming for him. That's what I'm saying, Bobby. A club is well, coming for him. But, when, but well, when it comes to Nottingham Forest, seriously, we, we, you and I are going to have a serious Everton, conversation. You Everton and I, you came, and I, they said they want to buy this guy. Go for him. You and, I, yeah, Newcastle. you and I are going to have a serious conversation at the end of this season concerning oh Nottingham my Forest. God. I know Nottingham Forest, they got that record, they won 19. They are, or yes, yes they are European champions. They're better can than they us. Can they do that? They are better they than us. They can't even smell it. They're what are, better, are you saying? They are better than us. Right now, in 1960, they are better than Nottingham Arsenal. Forest. They, Nothing else for they, they can't even win Europe. Next, next, they can't even win conference next time I'm on this show, I'm, they wearing, can't win I'm wearing a Nottingham they Forest can't jersey. Win conference I'm coming league. with my Nottingham <laughs> Forest jersey next time. Next, next, next. Oh my goodness. Well, I just hope that uh, uh, the man called Den, Emmanuel Denny will just get a better package. It's been a while, he's been in Europe there, playing good football, and well, all these clubs coming for him. Nottingham Forest, they'll be taking him on loan. 20 million pounds rated player. Oh, they got uh, Taiwo Awoni for 17 million pounds. Pull up, Sean, like I said. Well, wait to see what's going to be happening on Sunny and Dennis uh, transfer deal. Well, the day's actually coming by. Quickly, let's talk about two more transfer, or rather three. Barcelona defender Jura PK is trying to help his club by offering himself, well, he will be playing for free to help Barcelona. Two things here for them to be able to register the player and also to help them offset uh, most of the bills that are coming to Barcelona. Good one there, at least. Uh, that's a heroic move. Yes, it is a heroic move. Um, sometimes we say that um, there's no loyalty in football anymore. Anything, everything is about the money. Yes, the footballers have to eat. They're human beings as well. But still, it's, it's well, actually good. a lot of money before. Still, <laughs> but they still have to keep on eating. You understand? But still, the thing is, the good thing about it is we, we actually love to see gestures like this when it comes to players making sacrifices for football teams and for their fans. And, uh, but the thing is, it, it, he didn't put them in the position that they are right now. They made those decisions to get themselves where they are. He doesn't owe them 
the, the, the that. But mm. as, but he felt he feels as it, because Barcelona he feels it's home and and this is his family and he needs to help help them out. And I think it's a really really wonderful gesture by Gerard Piquet to actually do that to Barcelona. Mm. Personally, I don't think I can have I have any sympathy for Barcelona personally. But Seriously. yeah, but he Why has would, he has I'm, his I'm, I'm not even expecting that from you. Anyway. No, definitely you shouldn't <laughs> expect it from me because you are one of those <laughs> secret fans that are praying that <laughs> fall. Yes. I actually, mm. I, want, I want Barcelona to go into administration so that they can be relegated to Segunda. That's wicked. That's exactly <laughs> what I want. That's too wicked. <laughs> <laughs> Very wicked thought. Coming from Ibrahim there, we've been talking about Gerard PK trying to see how he can help his team Barcelona by offering himself well for free. He will be uh, resuming salary or uh, wages per week because he wants to help the team to uh, at least for them to be able to upset, offset rather most of their bills and also to help them get uh, players to see how they can register this player because they need money right now. Uh, Gerard PK doing well there. Now quickly we'll move away to talk about Manchester. City to finalize D for Anderlet defender Sergio Gomez for 11 million pounds. Fantastic player, but right now they want to at least get that deal done. That could be hap happening between today and tomorrow. Yes, well, it's nice when you have when you see um, big teams like this coming mm -hmm. in for young players, um, but sometimes it's it, it, there's there's a difficulty there. Um, a lot of people want to see, or some people want to see, um, a, a young player like this putting on the Manchester City jersey and representing Man City and all that. But would that be good for his development? A lot of people have actually pointed the finger at, um, at um, Guardiola that he's not a very good player developer. He doesn't develop young players. He doesn't also win. Exactly. He doesn't <laughs> develop young players. He doesn't have the time to develop young players. You know, so a lot of uh, people believe that when you want to develop as a young player, Manchester City is not the place for you to go. At the end of the day, you, you get signed. They send you on on loan three, four, five seasons, and then they sell you off. Hmm. You don't actually get the chance to represent the team. And you probably went there because you wanted to represent the team. And at the end of the day, you, you stay there for four, five seasons, and you won't play a single match for that team. So maybe uh, with a lot of, uh, he might, there's a change in policy. We might see him represent Manchester City, but I doubt it. Even if the, the deal gets done this season, I don't think he'll play for Manchester City this season. Probably loan him out or even keep him at loan at Genk before he even comes uh, next season. Then he'll probably play preseason and get loaned out again. And um, we've seen that a lot with, with young players coming to Manchester City. I think unless Guardiola leaves, that is, still going to continue. Change. that is still going to continue like that because I don't think he doesn't have a policy of developing young players. If Guardiola could actually sell the likes of Gabriel Jesus and Raheem Sterling, you understand, despite being so established in Manchester he, City, he doesn't, ha he doesn't have the patience. And we have players, other players, young players that have actually come. And this boy that actually went to Barcelona, this uh, young defender, and then you have um, players like Brian Diaz who actually came and left as well when they were very young. You know, and they have the potential to actually do things. And I mean, so it's 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 like that. You know, they they let they let go a young Jaden Sancho at mm. one point. You understand? So they really don't have patience with young players. That is the problem with Manchester City. So it's not really a very good place for young players to go to. You could have cho chosen something else, maybe, but not the red half of Manchester. <laughs> Sergio Gomez, Sergio Manchester. Gomez will be moving. Let's see what's going to happen concerning that deal. If Manchester City. Will be still in that deal with the Andalet youngster. Now we move away by talking about the final one here, where AC Milan open talks with uh, Arsenal's midfielder Sabilo Konga. This time around, it's like they are swapping. <laughs> Yesterday it was about uh, uh, Tonali uh, moving from uh, AC Milan to Arsenal. Now Arsenal, you have to also give way for a player. AC Milan, they are coming for Sambi. Mm. Actually, um, Milan right now are looking for a replacement for Frank Kessie. Mm. They actually left. They chased Ronaldo Sanchez from last season to this season. At the end of the day, they lost out. Yeah, at the end of the day, they lost out. They've been linked with a host of other players, and um, I think this is just this is just what it is. I think these are just rumors that are flying around. You know, agents dropping names and whatnot, what and, and all that, because there's still nothing concrete that has come out of it. No official bid has been uh, has been has been made. made. Yeah, Maldini has not spoken about it. That they're actually pursuing that particular target. So I think it's just uh, for now, it's just a rumor. But um, since it came up, most likely his name came up in a discussion somewhere. Is he the right player to that Milan should actually go for right now? I don't think so. I don't. Th I think they actually need somebody who is more established. Yes. Somebody in the mold of Because I see this is just a young player. Exactly. And they need an experienced exactly. player. Exactly. They have young players enough in that midfield. They have Benasa. They have um, Yasin Adli, who came in this season. They have Charles Aketelare, who just came in this season as well. And of course, Sandro Tonali that we talked about. 
the Tomaso Pepega came back. These are all young guys that are under the age of 23. They probably need someone with a little bit more experience. Getting a 25, 27-year-old guy there who has been there for a while, who can be able to hold the midfield for you, someone who's a little bit more established. I don't think La Conga is the kind, is, is the kind of person that they need right now. He's not in the... I don't think if it's the mold of the player that they need to, uh, to call a replacement for Frank Kessie. Mm. You know, sometimes when you have too many young players in a team, it could actually go get your uh, could play to your disadvantage as well. Because when you have young players, yeah, you're looking towards the future. These boys are young, they're energetic, they're hungry. But still, sometimes you need that calming influence, most especially in midfield. You actually need that calming influence there. And uh, most of their experience, most of Milan's experience right now is up front where you have the likes of Origi, Giroud and uh, Ibrahimovic. That is where their experience lies. The midfield is actually really, really dominated by young players who are predominantly under the age of 24, I think. So they need somebody who has a little bit more experience. They would have, they have gotten Renato Sanchez would have been a very good deal for them, but um, unfortunately that didn't work out. But I think they should stick to somebody else. If they're looking at Lokonga for the future, maybe. But they have enough young players in that midfield to actually suffice for the future. So I think they should go for somebody with a little bit more experience and then find themselves a centre-back as well, and they are good. Well, AC Milan, Arsenal, they have some things in common. He didn't let that Ibrahim does he know because from the way it is, like mm -hmm. the business is really thriving between the two clubs. Yeah, well, even Gazidis was Arsenal, CEO, uh, was Arsenal CEO before he was Milan CEO. Mm -hmm. So there's so a, rela so there's a relationship there. Part, of course, there's, there's a relationship there. Mm -hmm. You understand? But how many players have actually moved between the two clubs? They will move. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want anybody from us. They will move. I see Milan fans, they don't want anything to do with Arsenal. We wait to see what's going to be happening concerning the dads. Well, Falconet versus France. A big match to watch by 12 a.m. Uh, that will be a match to watch because the Nigerians are, can't just wait. They want to wake up to hear that we won against France just like Colombia. Shock Germany. That will be it on 360 Sport on Trust TV. Ibrahim Yusuf, thanks very much. Thanks for having me, Adini. Good one there. Well, I am Adini Ajishafe. Thanks for watching.